Hey YouTube family. All right, in this video, I'm gonna be going over the case of missing little three and four year old boys, Oren and Orson West. They went missing from California City earlier this week. It was on Monday that they were reported missing. And this case actually hits really close to home to me because I, I actually know the biological mother of these boys and it's extremely sad. Um, my heart just goes out to them. I can't imagine how that family is, is feeling right now as they're still searching for these little boys. I'm going to be going over a lot of information in this video. I want to be thorough and I'm going to just start off with this little article. The only thing that's really important is the line that says California City Police said at 8 p.m. Monday that the boys had been reported missing and were last seen in the 10700 block of Aspen Avenue. I just keep that in mind as far as the time frame, okay? Just to give everyone a little update because thank God the FBI now is involved and I just wanted to show people what the neighbors and updates on the FBI um, have to say and then we're going to go over the original interview that made so many people upset. California City Boys went missing. David Kaplan is in the neighborhood where they were last seen with the latest. David. Elizabeth, Jeff, I'm at the house where the missing boys were last seen behind me. Below the porch, there is balloons, pictures of the boys, candles that have been coming in from the community to support the family, also in honor of the boys while the community continues to search. Four-year-old Orrin West and three-year-old Orson West have been missing since Monday night when their adoptive parents say they last saw them in the backyard at their California City home. The father tells Eyewitness News he realized he left the side gate open and looked for the boys but saw no sign of them. Wednesday evening around 9, concerned neighbors and community members say they saw the FBI and police working in the backyard. Checked in yesterday and that's when we pulled up and saw the investigation going on and them digging in the backyard and well what we think was digging they had jackhammers or roto hammers going lots of lights Laura Romero says a local flew a drone while the digging was happening I did look at the videos myself and what looked to me is they were sifting through fine dirt to find things and they would find things and they would put them in baggies she says they came out with bags and took them to the forensics team eyewitness news has received no update from California City Police since Monday I do believe that Cal City PD should reach out to the community and give us some kind of an answer as to what they did find or what their plans are next what's the next step are we supposed to be going out and looking for these children why are we just still here i spoke to trezell west the adoptive parents of the boys from the other side of his front door he said he is not allowed to come out of the house but would like to thank the community for the support hmm. jeff elizabeth right now there are community members that have been Outside of the house, they've been pounding on the front door, chanting, where are the boys? They've been asking the parents questions, asking, where are the boys? Now, we reached out to the California City Police Department. We've reached out multiple times for the last two days. We have not yet received one response. That's latest here in California City. David Kaplan, Eyewitness News. Okay, so... <laughs> I just wanted to give everybody an update and let people know that, yes, the FBI is in fact involved and they feel the need for whatever reason to excavate the backyard. They had men in hazmat suits, so they're definitely doing a thorough investigation. So I'm at least kind of pleased to, to hear that. This case really hits close to home for me because I actually know the biological mother. I haven't spoke to her in, in years, but um, I lived in... Kern County where she lives for many years and and I know her and it's 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 heartbreaking here's a picture of the boys um and I just can't imagine the pain that the family is going through right now or where these little boys could be uh I'm just going to briefly with this particular article I only wanted to point out one thing because there's a lot of other things I need to go over, but it says California City Police 
said at 8 p.m. Monday that the boys had been reported missing. That's important because it's a huge part of the story and I just want you to keep that time in mind. I'm pretty sure that you noticed in the last video that Trizel refused to come outside and spoke to the reporter from behind the door. And it's probably because they didn't want to be on camera again. I think it's important to point out the fact that the only reason why they came out and spoke at all, or anybody even saw them, was because the mother went to their doorstep and accused them of being responsible. So it says, and this is from the 23ABC, the adoptive parents of the missing three and four-year-old California boys detail the night their boys went missing for the very first time Wednesday. Remember, they went missing on Monday. It says that they were, while also responding to allegations of foul play made by some neighbors and Bakersfield resident Ryan Dean, the biological mother of the boys who showed up on their doorstep. And good for her, I would have done the same thing in that position. And so there's other articles here as well. So I just thought it was important to point out that the only reason why they even spoke to the news at all is not because they were ever planning on doing that, but only because the Dean family was at their door and accusing them of foul play and the news was there. So I guess they felt like they had to say something. So now I'm going to go into that video, this original video of them on the news. I found the full 13 minute clip. So let's get into that and why that bothered myself and so many other people so much. Okay, so if anyone hasn't seen it and wants to, the last video that I uploaded before this video right here is the full 13 minute interview with Trezell and Jacqueline West. And in this video, I'll be going over the parts that are the biggest red flags to me. So this interview happened on Wednesday, the 23rd of December this year. So the two little boys right here that are um, Orin and Orson West went missing on Monday, December 21st. A search warrant was issued on Tuesday. And then this is the one and only interview that was done by these parents on Wednesday. Also on Wednesday, the detectives took their electronics, removed their other four children from the home, even though the West don't mention that, and then later that evening, the FBI started digging up their backyard. So I'll keep you updated on what happens next, but for now, let's let's go over this. Uh, we just want to thank everyone in the community for all the support we've seen. We've felt so helpless and seeing everybody out here really looking and helping out really means a lot. So, tell us what happened the night that kids went missing. Okay. From our yard. Okay. It was cold. I was going to make a fire. It's a lot of wood in this area right here next to Okay, like, oh. I'm going to be pausing this as we go because there's a lot to unpack and I want to be able to point out all of the things that, like I said, were the biggest red flags to me. And right away, okay, the reporter asks what happens and Trezell takes deep, exaggerated breaths and wastes like 10 seconds before he even starts speaking. And then he points out the fact that there's, you know, a lot of wood in this area. And I was just wondering... Well, we're going to get into that after after this video. Maybe I'll go on to Google Earth because it, just pay attention to what he's about to say next because it's all of this is really weird. Our house. I open up the back gate. I'm throwing wood, bringing it inside the house. My wife's inside. She was actually wrapping gifts, so we thought it was a good idea that they got our youngest to go outside and play with chalk on the, the back patio. Do not let them go on the dirt in the backyard. Okay. Oh. Again. Gotta stop it. Because where he's even, he said, throwing the wood and bringing it in the house. So the two statements kind of seem to contradict each other. Where he was actually bringing the wood is unclear. And I also find the statement extremely ironic that they 
don't let them go in the dirt because the boys could not have even left the backyard unless they walked through all of that dirt. But more importantly, the biggest part of that whole little clip that's you know important is he said, we thought it was a good idea that our two youngest, that our youngest two go outside. But why would your youngest kids ever be outside unsupervised, let alone on a winter night? Oh, and, and by the way, these parents here, they didn't even put jackets on the boys before sending them in the backyard, according to what they said that the boys were, were wearing, but it, it gets worse. Close. They was playing with chalk, and I came to the house, I saw them there, I went in the house, I came back out, I didn't see them there. I immediately went back in, asked my wife, did you see the boys? She said, no. They should be outside playing with chalk. I said, well, I didn't see them, so I came back outside and I started searching my backyard. I searched the whole thing. I realized that I left the gate open and <laughs> I panicked, came inside the house, searched the house, me and my wife. Once that hadn't pan out, I got in the van. I looked down the street, most directions. It was getting dark, getting cold, and I got in the van and I hit a bunch of corners. I went down this street. Okay. Okay, so just so you guys know, like the next minute or so is 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 packed and he's talking fast with a lot of keywords and contradictions. So I'm going to be stopping and pausing to uh, point them all out. But we can't skim past the part that he says you need to pay attention to when he says he got into the van. And then he also says that it was getting dark. So we know that he was the one, He, according to him, that noticed that the boys were missing for whatever reason looked in the house and left went outside you know got in his van and looked on his own right but keep in mind that he said that it's getting dark because we need to establish a time i turned my light on i searched i searched i called their names I talked to a gentleman on the street on the other side over there he didn't see me so then i came home and i told my wife you need to call the cops uh, it's been dark and i need help we gotta get going okay he says, I need help. It's getting dark. I need help. We got to get going. So again, this confirms that he came home because she wasn't with him. And he told his wife, you know, they had to call the cops. So she clearly wasn't searching with him. Then he repeats that it was getting dark. He, so he says that again. For reference, it's December. So getting dark is technically around like 5 p.m. So I called the cops. Cops came. First thing they did was tell us to stay in the house so they can get a hold of us. And they had us just sitting there and we wanted to keep searching. But everybody came out in droves. And I wanted to thank you guys that night, but we couldn't go outside. The cops told us the best are out here. The best are out here searching. Okay. So about that, right? With the best are out here searching. He says that when the cops came, that the first thing that they did was to tell them to stay in the house so that they could, quote unquote, get a hold of them. And that's why they didn't search. The reason why they're bringing this up is because the community, their neighborhood, was no, everyone noticed that they never assisted in the search, not from the first day until ever. So... So that's why they're bringing that up. And that excuse may have worked had this been if he was talking about Tuesday or after Tuesday. But he's talking about Monday. That's the day that the boys were reported missing. So on Monday night, they still had their phones. It doesn't make any sense that a cop would tell them, stay in the house so that we can get a hold of you. Their phones had been taken away. At least one of them could have been searching and I can't imagine as a parent why you wouldn't want to be but anyways and we appreciate it and nobody ever could tell we could never talk to anybody and that was the issue we just want to thank everybody we really want to and, thank uh, you guys please if anybody has seen them please call let somebody know it, okay that one I'm just gonna like skip that right there cause I don't want to hear them say thank you and that's annoying anyways because nobody was doing it for them they were doing it for these missing little boys but if you notice 
right around this time in their story, because it's been pretty clear that he was doing the searching, she was in the house, um, under the assumption that, you know, I guess they have other children. So, um, the narrative starts to change, though, to include the wife in the alleged search efforts, which is pretty confusing, and, uh, yeah, so just, just keep that in mind as we go forward. I'm going to skip down a little bit. So that's pretty much it. Have you guys, um, when you talked to the police all last night? Yes. Um, what? Oh, and let me uh, pause this just to let you guys know this part of the video and the reason why I came here, that's not me zooming in. The actual reporters and news crew, they started to zoom in on his hands guys, because it must have been weird to them gave too. Gave them your everything. Yes. The car. Yes. Did they get a, How did they get a search warrant? Did you I, guys? I, oh, no I don't see why they got one, but they got one. Yeah. We would have let them take one, anything. We would have let them take everything. We let them come in and search with us. We we asked them to come do that. What did they take? Just tech, and that's it. <laughs> They're literally zooming in and out because it's it's bizarre. At this point, it's been like five minutes that they've been interviewed. I'm, actually, they were out there before they started rolling the footage. And, and he's been standing there like that the entire time. So, so yeah, that, that was weird. Um, now, this next part, okay, is important because they're going to ask them for a specific time frame part is the search for information what happened where are you yes. et cetera, et cetera. and we're yeah and, and just so we are able to present the information correctly um at what time did you guys notice your kids went missing and at what time were they reported missing to the police it's about i, I believe i think it was about 4 30 going on five it was getting dark like i said five ish five ish that's about it that's when everything played out and then when did you guys call okay the fact that he said that's when everything played out is a very weird choice of words, but we'll get back to that statement later. I want to focus on the fact that he says that they went missing around 4.30, and then he mentioned that it was getting dark for the third time. Then right after that, uh, she says five-ish, right? So that that's what we're working. That's what we're working the with. The police to report that missing. I after we searched. Yeah. A little bit around here, we it was dark, so we definitely were, we got worried. Okay, now all of a sudden, here she comes saying that not only was she also searching, but that it was dark. Totally contradicting his uh, first half of this interview and what he was saying. So, anyways. Uh, would, would you say it was maybe within an hour, a couple hours? No, it was within minutes of us getting finished of what I've searched. Okay. It was within minutes. <laughs> yeah, the family's getting frustrated in the back listening to this, and I do not blame them. Because at this point, the reporter must have been as confused as I am when I was listening to this about their time frame because he asked them if it took a couple hours to report the boys missing. But father of the year over here was insistent and said more than once that they were reported missing within minutes of them searching. So someone's lying. Because remember back to the beginning of this video, I showed you the news article that stated that they were reported missing to California City Police Department at 8 p.m. And that's at least a three and a half hour window from when they claimed the boys went missing. And why would any parent wait that long it's insane it doesn't make any sense what could they have possibly been doing in that time now i'm going to skip forward for the sake of time like i said i uh, have the full video if anyone wants to see it and you might want to watch it for yourself and you might even find more contradictions than i even have found but this last part is not really on um i don't know if a lot of people have listened to it because this part of the interview isn't on most of the news articles and, and clips that are you know the videos that are out there 
but uh, I never heard this until I found this the extended version basically of, of the interview and I need you guys to listen to what they say. Right, right, it doesn't make sense. How, how did they disappear? How did they go out? You guys had the house supervised already. And my question is, why were they the only two children out? Where were the rest of the kids? The rest of the kids went with grandma. With who? They left. They went on vacation. So they did it? No, because they're too young. We, didn't, we, we watched it. And it turns out... I'm sorry, I gotta play that back. Because I don't know if you guys caught that. When they're asked where the rest of their kids were. He said the rest of the kids were with grandma. They left, they went on vacation. Now, it, it, then he says, and it turns out that that happened. So I, I need you guys to, yeah, everyone needs to hear this because what? With who? They left, they went on vacation. So they did it? No, because they're too young. And my question is, why were they the only two children out? Where were the rest of the kids? The rest of the kids went with grandma. With who? They left. They went on vacation. So they did it? No, because they're too young. We, didn't, we, we watched it. And it turns out that, yeah, that's that happened. How did the other right, 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 right. uh, Just really quickly before we forget. Uh, first and last thing. Before the reporter interrupts them being questioned, she starts to interrupt. For the, of course, of course, which didn't make any sense. I don't know what she was about to say, but she was clearly just trying to stop the conversation because of the fact that if her kids weren't in the house, what was this bitch doing? Why was she not searching? I, it, this doesn't make any... Now, this is when I really got pissed off because he said he was looking in the streets, drove his car, so why wasn't she also looking? What... What else could she have been doing? And and what the kids were on vacation? Like that has to be the like that doesn't even make sense either because unless it's another lie is I mean is that is that another lie? Cuz we know that the kids were removed from their home on Wednesday when the FBI became involved. So is it just a coincidence that they supposedly got rid of their other four kids for a one night vacation on the same exact night that the youngest go missing. And what bothered me the most about hearing this is that I was like really hoping that the children were going to be questioned and they could have provided more details and, and some truth into that night and, and what happened, but they conveniently weren't even home. So I don't know that that just, that was, that blew my mind because she clearly could have been helping search and wasn't. Hello. Now, the only thing I was want to point out right here at the very end, and I don't know if anyone else caught either, is that big beware of the dog sign. And there have been many cases where a dog, especially if it's a, you know, vicious dog or whatever, I don't know where they keep the dog if they keep the dog in the backyard. It just made me wonder if like there was an accident with it where the dog, you know, hurt the boys and I don't know. Who knows what happened? But where was the dog? Cuz if the dog was inside and they put those boys outside, that infuriates me just as much. But it's just something to think about. I don't I'm not saying that I know or have any knowledge of the dog having anything to do with this. But it just, I just noticed it and it made me wonder. So, uh, these, these, these freaking people. I mean, I could stop anywhere basically in this video and they're going to look the same and suspicious in every shot. Because overall, I'm not a body language specialist, but you really don't have to be to see that these people are being deceptive. In addition to their story not adding up and their words sounding completely rehearsed, I was bothered by their body language immediately. I'm sure that most of you noticed these things too, but let me just tell you what stood out to me, okay? The husband with his arms crossed over his chest with his thumbs up for the entire video. Wife was constantly swaying and rocking, fidgeting uncomfortably, and shaking her head in agreement to everything the husband said. They both avoided eye contact with the camera or reporter when they were directly answering questions. And there was overall no panic, no concern, 
not even any real emotion seen by either one of these parents throughout the interview. Now, if I would have only noticed one of those things, then I might have given them a pass, but the fact that they check every box is way too much for me. So you guys can let me know what you think in my comments or if something bothered you that I didn't mention. Um, but yeah. Next, we're going to move on to a family member's video of theirs because it's really important to get like the full context of of this case and why it's so I don't know why you could tell something just isn't right okay so the next video is from the AV news crew channel and this interview is of the biological mother Ryan Dean it's important to point out that Ryan went up to California City immediately and unlike the other parents she was involved has been involved in every search so on Wednesday she just started knocking on their door and she spoke to those parents before the news station arrived and the only reason that they came out of their house was because Ryan was speaking to the news saying that she thinks they had something to do with the disappearance of her sons and that's what made them, you know, come out of their home to do the interview. So I'm just going to play a clip of, of when she's speaking. It hurts. Everything, even before this. I'm not a bad mother. She said she was wrapping kids and she let my two kids out in the backyard because she didn't want them to see the kids. But you didn't let the other kids out. Where were the other kids? Why my two just go back there? At night, she said it was dark. And it's cold right now, so I know it was cold then. So I don't believe it. So when did she tell you this? Where were you when she told you this? I just came here 45 minutes when nobody was here. 45 minutes to an hour and we knocked on the door. And it took them a minute to come and he came out. And he wanted to say he's sorry and all that. I just don't feel in my heart that I, it's something. They're not. <laughs> Do you have a relationship with these parents? I don't know them. I don't know them. It's like so sad. So, um, I just wanted to point out that based off of whatever Jacqueline told her you could see that Ryan was definitely under the impression that their their other children were home that night and that she seemed pretty certain that Jacqueline told her it was dark outside when they went missing so I just wanted to show everyone the difference between this parent this biological mother and then the other parents that we just watched, because even with her mask on, you could see the pain in her eyes and you could hear the pain in her voice. And this is basically just how I would expect any parent to look and, and sound if their, if their three and four year old boys went missing. So it, it's just worth pointing out the, the difference. It, it really gives you a perspective on how nonchalant the other parents were i just want to point out that i did make a playlist so every single video that i'm going to be referencing today in this video it's going to be in the newest playlist that i made titled west so this video that i just played is from the av news crew youtube channel and they also have a lot of other videos about these missing boys they are um also they were also out there recording so if you want to see like additional footage that the news didn't include you could find it there on that channel so this one I also found this video um, one of the biological family members who was 
out there and you could see from where she was standing she was one of the people over on the side she was out there recording her own video also and remember when Trizel said that that's when everything played out well that statement bothered her so much that that is all that she put in her description so oh you know there's a lot of people that it um affected it it seems like the family didn't like hearing that statement i mean i can imagine this is all just so sad and one thing i do have to say though is i love the fact that this family all went up there together to support ryan and search for those boys and my heart goes out to them um as i said there's another video here if people want to see it of, of the ant like confronting them that the news clipped you know it off so check out this playlist if you want more information i think i want to go over though next the map of the area just to point out a few things before i give you guys my final thoughts on what happened so yeah let's let's do that next all right, so now I want to share this article with all of you. Once again, this was actually posted by the AB News crew, and I'll make sure to include a link to it in the description. Earlier, um, I also want to remind everyone when I played the eyewitness news video. In that video, they interviewed one of the neighbors, and she mentioned that another local flew a drone over the yard. Well, this right here is clearly a picture of their backyard after the FBI started digging. And when I saw this pic, I, my, my heart kind of dropped. And it's, it's because it's, I've had a lot of questions and this kind of answered one of the questions I personally had about this case. And that question was, did the boys really play with chalk that night? Because here's the thing, if they were put on that small patio area, and here it is zoomed in right here, actually, they have a, a better picture of it. If they were really put in this, in this area, right? Um, why are we not seeing any chalk? I mean, this is exactly where Trizel claimed that the boys were. And looking at this backyard, right, I don't I don't even think a, a child would necessarily want to play back here. They don't even have cushions on those chairs. There's nothing for them to do except for play with chalk. And there's no chalk marks. So I don't understand this. We know that there is no rain. There hasn't been any rain. And they wouldn't have a reason possibly to wash it off, right? So what is going on here? I mean, it's crazy. And the next thing that Trizel seriously needs to clarify is where the hell he was throwing wood and where he was bringing it inside the house, as he said. Because we could clearly see in this picture that this right here is the only opening in their gate. The, in, the gate goes, it's very high, way too high for you know a child to climb up it or get through anything. There's no openings through this gate at all. The only opening is the one right there on the side, that side back gate. So that being the only opening, and if this was really the empty field that he claimed he was in, okay, well, lastly, let's just go to Google Maps so that um, <laughs> we can view the area better while I tell you what else I want answers to, even though I, we will probably never get answers to any of these questions. So if this looks familiar... It's because this is their house right there. So we're just going to go to street view. And. All right. That's the field, right? Now this. Okay. 
Okay, so this is their house. As we can see, that's a little side gate. When the news was there, right, they were actually standing in front of, like, the neighbor's house, more so, you know, kind of over here. Instead of standing in front of their house, the news probably did that to, you know, so that they weren't right in front of their house in case people wanted to harass them or whatever the case may be, right? So, um, but anyways, if you pay attention in the interview that, like I showed earlier, when, as he's standing here, he looks to where his house is, which was to his left, if he's standing right here, and he motions to his side gate where he got the wood from, and then he motions towards this empty field. So, um, my first thought is, where's all this wood that he's talking about? Unless he's just talking about these, these tiny, these tiny twigs, because, um, I, I'm not seeing a lot of wood and maybe somebody who has a fireplace, I do not own a fireplace, but to those of you, if anyone knows anyone that does, or if you own one, can, do you see anything in this field that you could or would use to put in your fireplace to start a fire with? Let me know. Cause, cause I don't know. But anyways, that's what he said. The, 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 what bothers me more so than the fact that it's just a few twigs in this field is the fact that um, if this is the only opening, right? So, and we know that it is. And, and, and he was in this field. There's no way... He would have missed the boys that he described as rambunctious leaving that gate. If he was really here in this field, it's only so big. There's no way he could have missed two rambunctious boys, as he called them, leaving that gate. But, I mean, the fact alone that nothing he said justifies waiting four hours to report them missing to begin with. I mean, we already know he's lying. So I guess just my next question would be, why? Why, why would you lie? What time did those boys really go missing? And at this point, do we even know for sure that, that they were last seen alive on Monday at all? Something made the authorities remove their other children, even their two biological ones, from their home. And I don't know what made them do that, but um, I'm sure that they had a good reason. I really hope that those children were questioned because it would be interesting to know how their own children view the way that they treated the little boys and I wonder if they regularly put them outside unattended and how often they would send their own kids away for one day vacations or was that just because of whatever was happening that particular Monday <sighs> the last question that crossed my mind is did they even have presents for those little boys. I mean. Did they? Because. It would be really telling if they didn't. As soon as she said. That. Or as soon as they said that Jacqueline was allegedly wrapping presents. I wondered if any of them were for those babies. Because it would be really telling if. If there wasn't presents for them. And the fact that she didn't go help him look at all for those babies he said that he looked around and then he went in the house and told her he couldn't find them she knew that they were missing and then he went and got in his car and then he drove around and then he came back and I can't imagine that wrapping presents would be more important than looking for your 
missing babies, right? So um, I'm just going to give you guys my final thoughts on on all of this and you know what I what I think happened and whatever um to wrap this this up. The biological mother, Ryan, she believes that the that 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 her boys are dead and my heart really breaks for her and her family. It's officially been as of today one week and there's still no boys. At this point, no matter what the outcome is, I just pray that those baby babies are found. And if you want to know what I think happened, um, I believe with all of my spirit that those foster parents are withholding information, which automatically makes them suspicious of the worst. At this stage, it could only be one of two things. And uh, it's either that they intentionally did something to those boys and they covered it up before they way before they called the police or they left those babies unattended outside in the cold like dogs for so many hours that by the time they even noticed that they were missing they were already long gone which in my opinion means that they're guilty either way i mean of negligence at the very least and they need to be arrested. There's never a reason to lie about the details or wait to report when it comes to a missing child, two little missing boys. And for all of the babies in foster care who are neglected and worse, I really hope that justice comes through in this case. So, uh, this just stops happening. Anyways, I know that I don't usually make videos this long and I hope that you all understand that I just really wanted to be thorough and not leave any details out of this one. These babies are still missing. They are still out there somewhere and they deserve answers. So um, let me know what you guys think. Love you all and I'll be back soon.